Hi, this is Natasha Lara Lewis with Esther's Place, and today join me as I'm making a needle felted hedgehog. He's pretty cute with his little bouquet and very, very fun project, great beginner project. So some basic supplies you're going to need is we have our kit. It's got everything fiber wise that you need. Then you'll also want a foam block with three needles, um, two or three. I'll show you what those extra needles are used for. Um, and then a felting tool if you want things to go a little bit faster and a bit of blush. So those are the supplies and also um, optionally a hot glue gun to glue in the flowers. So if you open up your kit, you're going to find all the pieces. We have arms, we have eyes, we have a bundle of nose, which actually is three different pieces. We have inside of this little bundle is nose, covering color, and the actual uh, little snout part. We have tummy fiber. We have a little teeny tiny bit for ears. We have our bouquet, which I artfully made hedgehog bouquets for those kids. And then our fibers. We have a big roll of white and a roll of brown. So we're going to be starting out with that white wool. We're going to actually take and unwind that and wind it up nice and tight on your finger. The tighter that you do this, the less poking you're going to have to do. You want to keep it flat and tight and smooth as you wrap that around your finger. Then we're going to take that off of your finger after we give it one more tighten. Slide it off carefully. Watch so that it doesn't come out the middle here. And then see how it's like a cinnamon roll? You're just going to tuck those fibers in a little bit on either side. So now we have this nice cylinder that's going to be our core. So put that down on your block and we're going to use two needles to hold, help hold it in. One, two. We don't want to lose track of them so don't push them in too far. You want to still see the needles but if you flip this over and shake it, it shouldn't come off. Then we're going to start with just that single needle and start poking it all the way around. Now what's happening is there's tiny notches on the needle that tangle the fibers together. So as you poke, it's actually holding this together a little bit better and making it a bit more sturdy. So we're just going to poke a little bit all around all the sides here and notice how I'm trying to keep my other hand out of the way so that we don't get poked. And after I've poked it so it looks pretty smooth all the way around, then I'm going to lift these helper needles out. I always set them aside in the corner so I don't lose them. And then I'm going to just rotate this a little bit onto a new side. Put my helper needles back in and poke it some more. The more that we poke, the sturdier it's going to be and the better it's going to hold together. Now I usually just do this with a single needle starting out and then when it seems like it's holding its shape I go to the tool. The tool just has a lot of different needles so it goes a bit faster but you really want to watch what you're doing because if you poke yourself you've got six or eight times the, uh, the injury so you gotta be careful. So this is just catching those fibers together turning it into felt. So I'm going to rotate it again it's like a rotisserie. You just turn it every so often and poke it on all the sides. Now eventually what we're looking for is a nice sturdy shape that has a flat bottom. So one of these sides here or here is going to become the bottom and the other top can be kind of rounded out a little bit for the head. Now the deeper that you poke it is going to it's just going to shrink faster, but you're going to get some of those little holes. So if you want to leave yourself with a smoother surface, you want to not poke as deep. Poke with a little more shallow pokes. Okay, so we're just going to go around all the sides. If you're feeling brave, you can certainly hold on to it and rotate it as you go as well. So after spending a couple of minutes poking, we now have a nice core. Now I use white for the core because then you don't have to waste all of your good fibers for that. So the more I poke, of course, the more it's going to hold together and the denser it's going to become and the better 
better wearing, the more durable it'll be. So if this is gonna become a toy, then you wanna poke on this quite a bit. All right, so I've got a nice shape. If you squeeze this, it's gonna hold its shape pretty well. And we're gonna get started with adding color. Now the first color we're gonna add is actually gonna be the tummy. So you wanna take and just make a, a bundle, fits onto the front of the face. It should go from the bottom edge right there to the top. We're gonna to pin that in and then we're gonna poke around the edges, around this perimeter edge to anchor it. Now we're gonna just do that with a single needle before moving along to the tool. So we're going around all those edges to hold it in place. And that helps give us a little sharper edge. by anchoring it down. Now we're ready to go to that tool or continue with a single needle. And I'm doing shorter pokes. I'm not poking in quite as deep this time because I wanna make sure that that surface is nice and smooth. So I'm going into just the surface of the white, just kind of tap, tap, tap into the surface, not going too deep. Now this will take a few minutes to poke down, so take your time and continue until it's all nice and smooth and all nice and even. All right. So once we've got it nice and smooth, we can begin looking at adding our brown around the outside. Now the reason we do this color first is because it's much easier just to tuck that brown around the edge than to insert this into the brown, as you'll see in a minute. Okay, so we're gonna take our brown piece here and we're gonna start at the very edge and we're going to anchor that in. I pin it in with one needle and poke across with the other. I am just anchoring it so it stays. So when I wrap this, I can wrap it really tight. All right, so as I'm poking, you can see here, that now it's anchored and it's holding. So we're gonna pull that needle out and test it. Looks like it's nice and sturdy. And then we're gonna work our way around this whole shape, wrapping the wool up nice and tight as we go. And just keep continuing till you've reached around the whole thing. Then we're gonna take and we're gonna poke around this side, right this edge here where we've added the brown and then we'll close up the back. Okay, so we've got that edge kind of anchored down. And we're ready to start with the back here. So we're gonna pull this fiber in on the back and close it up and then poke it all into place. And same thing with this one, very short pokes will leave you with a nice smooth surface and it'll really end up looking nice. So we just wanna poke this with very short little pokes, not, not too deep, and that will leave us with a much smoother surface. Now from time to time, you'll wanna check and make sure that it stands on the table because sometimes the base of it can be a little lumpy bumpy and you might have to poke on that a little bit more. So just try it out and see if it stands. 
And if not, you might have to just smooth the space out a little bit more. Now I would recommend poking this quite a bit more till it's nice and even and consistent, but we're gonna just move ahead to the next step. So spend a few minutes poking this so it's nice and even, nice and smooth, and we've got a great little hedgehog shape. Now our next step will be to add the face, which includes our nose. We're actually adding on a separate structure for the nose. We're gonna take from that nose bundle. That nose bundle had three pieces to it. We're going to take those, uh, the tan colored piece here, and we're gonna roll it. You start at the end and you roll and tuck very tightly. Roll and tuck, roll and tuck, roll and tuck until the whole thing is nice and tight. And that's gonna give us a little snout for the face that we can go ahead and pin in and poke. So we're going to take and work around the edge, of course, first. And then we'll poke it all over. Don't think we're gonna need the tool anymore. We'll be using a single needle for all this detail work. Okay, so our goal is to get this kind of attached to the face at the same time while we're poking it. It's important that you poke it right onto the face and don't poke it a bunch before attaching because if you do that, you're going to uh, lessen its ability to bond with the surface underneath. It needs to be nice and fuzzy so that when we add it onto the face, there's plenty of fibers to help it to attach as we're poking it in. Okay, so I'm just doing this downward poking on the shape here, which will help to shape the little nose as well. And I'm gonna give it a test. I'm just gonna, you know, try it out. It looks like it's on the face pretty well, so we're ready to go to the next step. And that is covering it. Now, one of the other pieces that we have here in our nose bundle is the nose, of course, but set that aside, is this piece that is the same color as the belly. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start it out at the forehead and we're gonna smooth it down to the belly and it helps to kind of cover this piece that we've added and blend it in a little bit more. So we're just gonna start going around the edges, of course, and then poking this whole thing till it's nice, nice and uh, anchored in there. And it's just gonna soften that little bit of fiber that we added for the nose. Okay, so we're gonna poke and you can see how you can still see the color underneath there slightly, but it does help to kind of mold it into the face a little bit more. All right, so little pokes on this. I'm using my finger here on the end of the needle to just go very, very, very short with my poke so it leaves me with a nice smooth surface. Okay, we've almost blended that all in and it's time for a nose. So it protrudes a little bit from the face, but you can poke it down as much as you want. This is very forgiving, so you just keep working with it till you got it the way you want it. So the nose we're gonna take and we're going to roll that. A little trick is to breathe on it and roll it because the moisture in your breath helps the fibers to kind of roll a little bit better. So we've got our nice nose and we're gonna pin it in to the end of our little snout that we added and then work your way around the edge to anchor that in.
Okay, so we really want to leave that nose a little bit, a little bit fluffy so it stands up off the surface just a tad. And there we have it. So let's add some eyes. We're just going to put little indentations where we want the eyes to go. You don't need a lot. Just a little tiny valley for the eye. And once we've got that poked in there, we'll take our eye fiber, divide it into two. Now a good trick is to always hold your hands far apart when you pull those fibers. And then use that same technique of rolling it and breathing on it to form a nice little eye. Poke it in with one needle and then anchor it with the other. Now if the eyes are too big, just go ahead and take them out and try again with a lesser amount. It does not take a lot of fiber for this. Roll and poke it in. Already you're starting to see that character come alive. It looks really cute. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a couple little ideas for the cheeks. So to give them cheeks, what we're gonna do is we're going to go into the cheek area with our needle, but we're going all the way through to the large body of the needle and just gently pull up. And we're gonna do that like in two directions. And what it does, kind of smooth that down a little bit, is it gives them a little bit of a cheek. So do that on the other side, just come all the way through and just very gently lift. You don't want to do this on the tip of your needle, break the needle, come back to the body of the needle. So there, we've added some cute little cheeks and they're ready for blush. We actually like to use real makeup blush because it just looks so darn cute. There we go. Okay, so now it's time for some arms and some ears. We're almost there. It's looking really cute. So let's go ahead and do those ears. It's very similar to the eyes. Take and split your color into two. Roll that up. And then we want to take and poke it in somewhere right above the eye in the brown, so kind of right here at an angle above the eye. And poke just around the edge of that so it still stays kind of fluffy and dimensional. Don't want it to poke down into the brown too much. We want it to still stick up just a little bit. All right, second hedgy ear. There we go. So now we've got two little ears in there and I did this because if you wait till later sometimes you forget about the ears and he definitely looks cute with them. Okay our last thing is going to be arms. So we're going to take this and we're going to split it into two. You start at the top and you just peel it into two pieces. And this is kind of a cool technique but it takes a bit of practicing so we'll walk you through it. We're going to take our needle and fold it over, fold that fiber over the needle. And now I'm pinching, so I'm actually pinching down and I'm turning my needle like a little screwdriver. So I pinched and what I'm waiting for is I'm waiting for that needle to catch on the fibers and you're gonna feel it catch. When you feel it catch, then you can start winding the rest of the wool on there and what it does is it makes these very tight little arms. So you just roll this whole thing on up. Now, if you find this frustrating, you can roll it by hand, but it is going to uh, be a lot bigger and takes more time to felt it down. So I encourage you to try this technique. You can also use a pipe cleaner. If you feel like this just isn't working for you, you can wrap the fibers around a small pipe cleaner. Okay, so now that we've rolled that, I'm gonna roll it even more, twisting, pinching here and twisting here until I've got a nice solid arm. And then just carefully pull that needle out and it's already kind of felted and ready to be put right on there. So I'm gonna position it, 
poke it in. And we have one arm. Now if you leave the arms a little big, you'll have enough to glue the bouquet in. So you can leave the arms to be a little bit bigger. All right, arm number two. Fold over the fibers, twist, twist, twist while you're pinching till you start to feel it turn and then continue turning. Now, if you feel like you've got too much fiber, you can always pull a little bit, pull a little bit off. You don't have to use all of it. And you want to try to guide that a little bit so that it's even along the whole thing. Okay, so I'm twisting, 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 and then carefully slide that off. If you feel like you need to poke it a little bit, just very carefully you can poke it into shape as well. All right, so there we have it. One arm down, the other one getting on, and we are almost ready to just glue that little bundle, little flower bundle, into its arms. Okay, so there's our little hedgehog. Hi! And he's ready for his flower bundle. So you can put that in there and then just hot glue it and hot glue his hands so that it stays. Arrange it however you like. And just glue that all into place. And there you have the adorable little felted hedgehog that you've completed and he makes a beautiful addition for a woodland nursery, fall decorations, or even a great little Christmas ornament. So I hope you've enjoyed making that and definitely check out all of our kits and tutorials on our website and online. Thanks again. This is Natasha Lara Lewis with Esther's Place and happy felting.